progress. You know, 10, 15 points on your head right now, and, and you, you got to call a couple timeouts. I mean, this was a 9-9 game, folks, not too long ago. And now it's 29 Gonzaga, and they're active on the glass again. Bulldogs have made six of their last seven from the field. And Harris catching the three, but Sam Dower punched at it and knocked it out of bounds. So it'll be Portland basketball. Dower on the floor now. As Elias Harris is in a rarefied air here with Gonzaga as well. He's the fifth all-time leading scorer. And he's just the third member of the Gonzaga 900 rebound club. I mean, they've had so many good bigs here. Andy, I can't even tell you. I had to coach against a bunch of them, okay? I mean, you talk about the likes of Jeff Brown and Casey Calvin, J.P. Batista, Ronnie Turioff, Ronnie Turioff, rather, Austin Day. Those are the name of few. So Elias, Elias Harris is in fantastic company. And a swarming defense again on Rodgers. Tanner Riley into the game. Hits the three. That's what he's in there for. Yeah, Tanner Riley, a streaky shooter from the state of Washington. And again, they get that ball deep. And Dower missed the shot. Portland still looks pretty poised, even though they absorbed that run. Well, they average 15 turnovers a game, which is not very good. Again, they're young, and they're not that deep. So they have to make every possession count. Way off the mark by Nicholas and a foul underneath. It'll go against Portland. It'll send us to a timeout here on the floor. Bulldogs have the early eight point lead. Well, the best. Twenty to twelve as Gonzaga has the lead here with 11:24 to go in this first half. The 2013 West Coast Conference Men's and Women's Basketball Championships return to the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas starting March 6th through the 11th. Nine men's and nine women's teams compete for their ticket to the NCAA Tournament. Visit WCCSports.com for complete event information. And if the tournament started today, which we know it doesn't, this is how the men's bracket would look as Gonzaga and St. Mary's, the top two seeds in the league. Yes, and that was really expected uh, with one and two there. But Santa Clara is the number four seed. They've really been a hot team. They've done a nice job to get in that into the fourth seed so they get that first round bye. And it's so uh, intricate, I mean, the way that it's worked out now with a nine-team league, where those top two teams get the automatic buy, a double buy, basically. Oh, three by Barham, that's off the mark. But Harris right there for a rebound. What else? This is David Stockton. Oh, thanks, you. Well, Stockton on the dribble drive. He was looking to make an interior pass there, but he's really good at that floater shot. So now the lead back to 10 for the Bulldogs and a steal by Harris. And fouled on the way to the basket. So Harris will head to the free throw line. And if you're Portland, Andy, you really want to avoid those live turnovers, meaning now Gonzaga can take it live and make something happen, which Elias Harris did getting to the line. Eric Rebino looking for his first career win here against the Bulldogs, 0 and 13. And I thought Elias got fouled in the act, so. Oh, so too. I'm sure that was going to be free throws, but a baseline inbounds. And Dower skillfully lays it up and in. And Drew Barham with the great bounce pass post feed, so Dower could do something with it. Lead back to 12. For the Bulldogs. Important possession here for Now Rogers cut off. Needs help. Now we'll back it out and missed a shot. Weak side rebound. There for Harris. Another big guy that can run the floor with a basketball, too. Hard to stop. Well. Elias Harris juked his man like he was going out to receive and back cut him. Perfect pass by Stockton. Doing this without Olenek on the floor. He'll check back in here momentarily. 
This shows you how deep Gonzaga is. It is a 19-2 run for the Bulldogs. This game was tied at nine. Rodgers, that's way off the mark. But we talk about the dexterity of a big guy in Elias Harris, and uh, got a little help from a friend. Right, watch. He, he's going to reverse the basketball, step out, juke his man, quickly back cut him, and then Stockton delivers with the perfect bounce pass. Right. Leads him perfectly so he can lay it up and, and finish. Portland has gone one for seven from the field after starting out three of six. Here comes a three attempt. That's missing. Nicholas right there for the putback. Nicholas, the Spokane kid. And Portland needed that. We were talking about the, the run that Gonzaga's on. They need to get second chance opportunity. And the big freshman, Shemek. Karnowski is, fi is fouled on the way to the basket by Vandermars. I'm sitting at practice the other day because the one thing that Karnowski does not do well is shoot free throws, and he was shooting free throws for what seemed like an hour yesterday. Let's see if it helps him here on the line today. Conversely, Olenek, Harris, and Dower are really good mm -hmm. foul shooters, and they get the majority of the minutes, right? So. They can help the Zags close out a game. And, you know, I played with a guy named Kareem Abdul Jabbar. One of the great things about him was he got fouled a lot, but he was a career 75% foul shooter at seven foot three. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to stop him. Mean, they had that old hack a shack thing because Shaquille O'Neal couldn't shoot free throws. And they put him on the line and tried to make him, uh, make him earn him rather than dunking it home. Exactly. So for Vandermars there, it was probably a pretty good foul making Carnet. Karnowski make a couple, right? Absolutely. So 27-14, and a full timeout called, uh, oddly in between free throws here by Eric Reveno. Let's go to take a look at what was going on and what has been going on in the West Coast Conference. With some WCC headlines. Zaga, as we told you at the beginning, could be the first West Coast Conference team since USF back in 77 to be the number one overall team in the land. And they can uh, solidify that with a victory here today. Vegas, baby Vegas. Yep, the men's and women's tournaments beginning on Wednesday at the Orleans Arena. And St. Mary's placed on four years probation yesterday by the NCAA for failure to monitor men's basketball program as far as some recruiting was going. So unfortunate for St. Mary's. And uh, St. yeah, they Mary's got the number two team in the West Coast Conference. They got hit pretty hard, yeah. but they're an NC2A tournament team, and, and for the future, their probation will not include preventing them from going to the conference tournament nor the NC2A tournament. And that's a good. That's a good thing for that program, and it's a good thing for the conference. Absolutely, let them compete and get to the postseason. Karnowski with one more. Looks like that uh, practice paid off. It always does. <laughs> Perfect on a pair. There's some swarming Gonzaga defense. And here, turnover and a turnover. Travel. You don't want to turn it over, but opposed to live, there's a dead ball rebound. Now Portland can set their defense and have a chance to get a stop. So Stockton will run the point. Very versatile in the fact that they can Pangos not only as a point guard, but also as a shooting guard now. Smaller lineup in here. Three up by Pangos. And Karnowski had it, but lost it. He is an imposing figure. He's 7 one, 1. He is one big man, and he's wide. It's very unusual to have two bigs that are left handed. Karnowski's one, and Dowers, two. You know, it's like playing a left handed tennis player, playing a, a big that, you know, because he goes to that opposite shoulder you're not used to. Shake and bake by Vandermars, but he missed a shot. And Olenek will track down the rebound. Back on the run of the Bulldogs. A wide open look for Bell. Now Portland in their transition just didn't do a good enough job of matching up. And Gonzaga will absolutely make you pay if you don't do a good job in transition. And a timeout called by Portland. And uh, that would be three timeouts called here in the first half of this game. 
So St. Mary's and Gonzaga, as we were talking a little bit about uh, them earlier, but uh, the WCC tournament has been dominated by these two teams over the last four years. Well, those two programs pretty much have the trifecta. And what I mean by that, Andy, is they're rich in talent because they do a great job of recruiting. They're outstanding coaching staffs. And both have really good home court advantages. And when you put that all together, you have dynamic programs. And certainly Gonzaga won, St. Mary's two in the last four years. That's what they've been about. St. Mary's the defending champs. And that was a lot of news around here, especially because these Bulldog fans are so used to having their team finish number one in the seating every year, it seems. Let's see what Portland has in mind here after they get Presley back into the ball game. Well, they need a good possession, meaning they need a basket. That's what they need right now. They need to stop the bleed. And there's a nice start, at least. Yeah, Ryan Nicholas delivered. His, he and his buddies, they needed that basket badly. Andrew Eddy, one of the uh, seniors honored before the game, in the lineup. And now Mangos gets that one. Uh, he, Kevin Pankos is looking comfortable out there yeah. today, isn't he? Unlike BYU the other night, he is feeling it. And one thing about Pankos, though, is we talked about not afraid to take that shot. He was one of 12, but he hoisted up 12 three-point attempts. Well, I, I actually agree with that. I mean, it, it shoot or shoot. And you've got to keep believing in yourself. Rodgers will give you that one. It goes down for three. 33 19 in favor of the Bulldogs. Quick look inside. Karnowski. Uh, really nice inside screen by Eddie to free up Karnowski. It, it's almost surgical, their offense, isn't it? Well, they're all about execution. They're all about being unselfish, and they're all really good passers. You know, if you if you put that all together, I mean, you're going to be dynamic offensively, and they certainly are. Well, a foul as Guy Landrietti is called for the personal foul. We have a, an official's timeout here. Well, they make the easy ones, and uh, we'll see them make some trick shots. The Gonzaga Bulldogs. Yeah, don't try this at home when we come back. Gonzaga make all the regular normal shots, but how about some of these trick shots? And put together a little video off the wall. Yeah, we got Kevin Pankos and Kyle Trakinis and Drew Barham. And this is phenomenal stuff. All right, that's two. And, uh, you know, the third time's the charm, right? Yeah, right. Now, we don't know how many reps it took all of this to happen. Nonetheless, it's super impressive. Uh, this is the best one. Knocks the ball in midair. That, that's that's fun. Absolutely. And it just kind of goes to show you how loose this this team is. And it's easy to be loose when you're 15 and 0 in the conference and have 28 wins. Well, it is. But it takes a lot to get there, Andy. And talking to Mark Few before the game, he said, you know, this team has that true chemistry. You know, they really care about one another and play extremely well with one another. Barker with that rebound. Strong to the basket. Yeah, Riley Barker has provided some good minutes off the bench in this last half of the season for the Pilots. Nice job. And a foul there on Rodgers at the top. Now, just, be, just so you don't think we were playing around with any video tricks here, we're going to show you that last one again because this is impressive. Slow-mo, look at that. Balls collide in midair. I mean, talk about perfection of timing. <laughs> and then it has to travel the perfect distance. I wish we could get to the bottom and find out how many, how many takes it would take to get that right. Impressive nonetheless. And it was slow there by Presley and a reach out by uh, Parker. Yeah, Olenek is a load. Well, you know, he, he is. I mean, he he's one of the best players in the country, okay? He, top three or five players in the nation. That's how good he is. And he has no weakness at seven feet. 
I mean, he, he has a complete offensive game like yeah. we showed, and then defensively, he guards, he blocks shots, and he's a terrific rebounder. And it doesn't look like it takes much effort at all. Just natural. Nice no look pass there. Shot missed. Olenek right there to put it back up and in. Well, what I think is really interesting about Kelly Olenek is he played point guard position through his junior year in high school. That's why his skill level is so high, and then he grew like seven or eight inches. And again, the Pilots need a basket. Wrestling in some trouble. Shot clock down to 10. Bailey takes a winning one on one and a foul. Foul called. It will be Portland basketball. This game is brought to you by the Family Home Care. You always get the home court advantage you deserve. Live happy with FHC. Mark Few not entirely excited about that call, but Kelly Olenek called on the bump on the drive of Kevin Bailey. And Kevin Bailey, nice job of recognizing you had Olenek on you. Kind of a mismatch. He tried to take him off the dribble and drew the foul. Dribbled off the foot, scrambled for it, bell to the deck. And he tried to call a timeout, but the jump ball is called. It will be Gonzaga basketball on the alternating possession. But you need guys like, like that, diving to the floor. On the sixth turnover early for Portland. Yeah, it created another possession for Gonzaga. That's why you do that. I mean, you don't know. Maybe necessarily you have the possession arrow. You see that ball on the deck and you try to go get it. Simple as that. Nice deflection there. Off of Tanner Riley and out of bounds. And for Portland, it's getting dangerously close to being out of hand this game. So they need to get their share of stops and score some points down at the other end to stay in this first half. Portland right about that number that Gonzaga allows their opponents here in the first half is a a free pass to the basket and dumps it home. I'm sure that drives coaches nuts with the fact that it was just that easy. Well, it does. I mean, uncontested shots just kill you. Riley with a step back three. And deflects to a winnick. And here's a seven-footer run of the point. And his pass picked off. And now Nicholas toward the hoop. Missed. And the rebound tapped out of bounds. Last touch by Riley. Oh boy, that's unfortunate. I mean, Ryan Nicholas, he's got to make that shot. And uh, Bryce Presley, terrific job of intercepting that pass. It looked like, you know, they had something going. They were going to get an easy two. So now again, the pressure on Portland to try to stop Gonzaga and to keep this manageable. You're exactly right. I mean, Portland, they need to finish this half strong to stay in this game. That's not going to help. Old alley -oop from one big to the other. Again, they play off of one another so well. Kelly Olynyk is, I mean, he passes like a guard. Like we said, he played point guard up until a few years ago. They're trying to go back door, and the ball deflected out of bounds. Sounds some good defense there by David Stockton. But the Gonzaga Bulldogs sharing the load there. One big to the other. And Harris, the recipient of that easy layup. Bulldogs in control. Now I'm not one to take matters lying down. So when I broke my ankle, I was pretty frustrated. Bulldogs by 20, 41 21, 345 to go here in this first half. And again, coach the offense, uh, a lot of guys moving without the basketball. Yeah, with, which Gonzaga does so very well with Kenny Olenek. He's got his back to us right there at the elbow. And as the ball is being reversed to the other side, Harris is going to come across with a little bit of a brush screen. And then Olenek with the great curl. And if you're Gonzaga, that's awesome. But if you're Portland, they got to play better defense than that. Zaga has 11 assists on their 17 field goals. As you see, Olenek, six points, five rebounds, and four assists already. And they have made 12 of their last 14 field goals, and they have all been in that bunny range right near the basket. They have. Well, again, they're selfless. They're all very good passers, one of the best passing teams in the nation. Not just the 
issue and leaving the layup short. Now the Bulldogs on the transition run. Harris. High Archer. Good. And a foul. Again, Gonzaga off the rebound puts tremendous pressure on the defense. I mean, this is what they do so very well. Is they the quick outlet, guards available, that's Pangos, and then he sees El El Elias Harris just coming down the lane, too free if you're Portland, a Portland defender. And, and I really liked how Elias showed his athleticism there by avoiding the charge. Good body control by the big guy. And he converts on the and one opportunity, and your steal there by David Stockton. And yeah, that name does sound familiar. He is the, uh, the son of John Stockton. Start with the Utah Jazz for. Oh, he only had a 19 year career. <laughs> All time leader in the NBA in both assists and steals. That is rather impressive. And he could score a little bit too now. When needed. You know, a lot of people don't realize, Andy, is second all time leading in, in points in the NBA. Second all time is his teammate, Carl Malone. Absolutely, the mailman. I'm not sure Olenek knew that it went in. Because <laughs> he kind of lost control of it. Hey, but it's your night. Well, your afternoon, it's your afternoon. It's been their season. 11 0 run again by the Bulldogs, and a near steal by Harris. But he'll reach in and commit the foul. Let's take a look at this and see if Olenek actually did know that that ball went down. Well, David Stockton with the perfect alley oop pass, and yeah, he, I guess he did see it. You can see Barker does a good job of trying to disrupt the alley oop, but Olenek, he still took it home. And he'll take a rest with those eight points. And as Mike Hart will come back in, guard the inbounder. Nicholas has missed a couple of shots inside for Portland. Swarming defense, near steal by Stockton again. As Rodgers will hoist and bank that one in. Yeah, Derek Rodgers, the lone senior for the Pilots, has made a couple threes in this game. Good job by him. And if this continues, folks are going to be looking at the number one team in the land come Monday, the Gonzaga Bulldogs. And a feather in the cap for this program that has many, many accolades over the last 15 years. Now one left short. Well, don't think they don't want this to be a convincing win. They do, for that very reason. Bailey, again, a miss inside. He'll track down the rebound with Presley. We get the two-minute mark to go here in the first half. Vandermars double team and left it short. And again, the Bulldogs on the run. I mentioned that with Hart. He's had a couple of chances to, to score, but wants the good shot. And there's a steal on the backdoor attempt. Now that's the first time that, that Portland's done a good job with that high-low pass. Great turnover. And Bailey missing inside. Nicholas to the deck to keep the possession alive. Boy, that's a dangerous player. When you, a play when you see players about to collide on the basketball floor with no padding. Uh, hold your breath. Presley from the outside. He'll hit. Well, he's a good-looking freshman now. You know, his papa, Harold Presley, was a great player at Villanova on that national championship team for Raleigh Massimino. And then, of course, his dad, Harold, was a really good player in the NBA. And that ball deflected into the backcourt. Oh, uh, the bloodline's on this play here. Mango's forcing the to the shot. And Vandermar's caught that one out of bounds. Uh, Kevin Pankos coming up at the half. We'll take you around the West Coast Conference and we'll also give you some highlights and break down this ball game here in the first half and get you ready for half number two here from Spokane, Washington. Guinness is now in the trick shot specialist as Harris misses that one. 34 seconds in this first half. Nice deal again. Technically hold for the last shot, but we're going to watch 
one good possession there. Exactly. You're right, though. Gonzaga is going to get it back and will likely get a shot in, in, in the half. Now Bailey will force the issue. And miss the layup. Hart and Harris collide, and the ball out of bounds. It'll be to Portland. Well, if Portland can get it in bounds, then obviously they will get the last shot of this half. And, of course, they want to make that shot and feel, you know, at least halfway decent that they got the last basket of the half. And they go back to work to Vandermars with a tough catch. Got his man in the air and left the layup long. Grant Guinness will clear. Still a little time. And now Stockton will let fire. And just off the mark. And the first half. Has come to an end in another dominant first half here at home by the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Flexing their offensive and defensive muscle. We will come back with our halftime show here in just a moment. After the first 20 minutes, Bulldogs 46 and the Pilots 27. Take a look now at the West Coast Conference men's standings. After the action today, Gonzaga at the top, trying to run a run the table here in the West Coast Conference. St. Mary's at 13 and 2. Those are the top two seeds in the West Coast Conference tournament. And then teams kind of bunched up there. I mean, we expected BYU, but Santa Clara really one of the more surprising teams here at 9 and 6. San Francisco, San Diego each at 7 and 9. Portland at 4 and 11. Pepperdine with their loss to San Diego today at 4 and 12. And Loyola Marymount struggling at 1 and 14. Now the women's conference standings. Looks like a uh, carbon copy. Gonzaga and St. Mary's at the top, the 1 and 2 teams. San Diego, the third seed at 11 and 4. There's Brigham Young, Santa Clara, Loyola Marymount at 5 and 10, along with Portland at 5 and 10. And San Francisco, 4 and 11 with Pepperdine bringing up the bottom at 1 and 14. We will come back with more on our halftime show here from Spokane. Kelly Olenek and the Gonzaga Bulldogs in firm control, 46 to 27 at the break. Event in formation. Let's take a look at those brackets for the West Coast Conference Tournament coming up, Coach. And uh, again, no surprise that uh, Gonzaga number one, St. Mary's number two, and BYU number three. A great job by Santa Clara right there, getting a first round bid in the conference tournament. San Francisco will take the five seed. It is San Diego number six, Portland number seven, and Pepperdine and LMU will play in that first round matchup on March 6th. You mentioned St. Uh, Mary's, and uh, I'd like to get your thoughts on some of the under-the-radar teams in the NCAA tournament, possibly. Yeah, don't fill out your bracket just yet, but here's some sleepers. The St. Louis, who has a senior-laden team, good seniors, and they're playing with great purpose because of the passing of Rick Majerus. And then with St. Mary's, when you got Matthew Della Vadova, one of the best point guards in the nation, you can go places. San Diego State, the Aztecs, Steve Fisher knows how to coach in the NCAA tournament. And then Memphis has won 18 in a row, I believe, a very hot team going in to the NC2As. Kind of a wide open situation this year in the NCAA. As we head to break here at the half, it's Elias Harris and the Gonzaga Bulldogs leading 46-27. Gonzaga Bulldogs leading Portland 46 to 27. Bulldogs here at the break as you welcome you back inside the McCarthy Athletic Center here at Gonzaga University in Spokane. They're going crazy for their hometown Bulldogs and uh, with great reason. Andy Mazur along with coach Brad Holland and you know, we've talked extensively about how good this basketball team is but I'm going to ask you how good is this basketball team? <laughs> I think they should be num number one ranked in the country after this and more importantly if they can win the conference tournament have a number one seed in the NC2A tournament. And that's what they're really striving for. Don't be fooled. I mean they want the number one ranking overall be a nice feather in their cap but uh, that seed is what they're playing for and Kelly Olenek is uh, going to try to do his best to get him there. Well he is and we've talked about how how good he is offensively and he's really having his way so far in this game. He's done it mostly on the interior as he's going to come around again this curl screen and another easy basket for him but 
on senior day, and he's not a senior. He's having a heck of a game so far. Well, Elias Harris is a senior and trying to go out in style. Well, he will. As we said, with all the great bigs that Gonzaga's enjoyed in their history, he's one of the best. Nice high-low, which has been so effective for him in this first half. Take a quick look at the stats in the first half. Gonzaga dominating in a field goal percentage, but uh, also dominating inside. 26 to 4, outscoring Portland in the paint. Well, that that's as dominating as it gets, right? I mean, 26 to 4, and Portland doing a nice job of shooting the three ball, 7 for 13. But they got to shoot a higher percentage overall. They're only shooting 30%, Andy, in this first half. All right, well, you talked about Gonzaga perhaps being a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. Who else do you have up there as far as your number one seeds across the country? Well, I mean, I have, I have Duke, um, and I have Indiana, and I have Kansas. Kansas has play, been playing very well. And why I have those teams is because they have a combination of good guards and big, big men. So when you know you're talking about in Indiana, you got Cody Zeller on the interior, Gonzago, Olenek, and Harris, and then Duke has Mason Plumley in Kansas, of course, has Jeff Withy, and then those four teams all have great guard play. So you combine that, that inside-out game, I like those four teams getting top seed. Yeah, you really never will, can go into a slump offensively if you have both of those going at the same time. Well, that's exactly right, and they feed off of each other. Again, inside to out is a strength to have in your, in your game. It's been a really strange season also for those uh, number ones. And uh, actually, with a non-power conference, looks like the WCC to have a team that's ranked first in the country. Well, Gonzaga, Gonzaga has cachet. Okay, they've been to 14 straight NC2A tournaments. And so the way they've played, they've crept up in the rankings. I mean, they deserve to be number one. Their power ranking is extremely high. It's in the top 10. So I think they got a great opportunity. It'll be something uh, great for the, for the conference as well. You know, and again, talking to Mark Few as, as Vandermark with a nice jump hook going to his left shoulder. You know, Mark Few said, hey, we're embracing it. We've never done it here at Gonzaga. This goes off our bucket list if we can get a number one ranking and a number one seed in the NC2A tournament. And a big opening basket there for Portland. And a foul away from the basketball. A little stop play. Vandermar is guilty of the infraction. It will be his second personal foul. Now, I hear coaches talk about the first five minutes of each half being so important. Yeah, you want to win. You, you want to win that first, you know, quadrant, you know, of, of, and go into that first timeout of making a dent into this lead. Spin move there by Harris, but Eddie missed the layup, and Olenek had to tip off his fingertips and out of bounds. It'll be Portland basketball. Now Mark Few has never won fewer than 20 games in his career. I thought you were going to say like 30. <laughs> <laughs> it seems, it seems that way, doesn't it? It seems like they win 30 every year. I know they're one of the five teams in America that had 25 wins or more, you know, in the last five years. And fortunately for the West Coast Conference, you can also add BYU and St. Mary's in that conversation along with Duke and Kansas. No steal by the Bulldogs, and Eddie missing the dunk. And a foul on the play. And everybody really excited for Guy Landry. Eddie to get into the books here. He hasn't scored yet. He got a great chance here uh, going to the line after getting fouled to try and dunk this basketball. We talk about Guy Landry Eddie who had some starts a year ago for this team. Yeah, 15 starts. So, so he's no he's no foreign uh, player too. He is foreign. Grew up in uh, Paris, but uh, he started for the Zags in his career, I believe, 19 total times. So he's comfortable in that role. He's comfortable also being a major contributor in his two years in this program. And I think it's the ultimate compliment to a player that you know they, they find themselves on the outside looking in sometimes and you never know how a young guy is going to react to that if he's going to be a good teammate and all his teammates say that he has been excellent. Yeah I mean it's got to be tough right because he started 15 games last year and he hasn't started playing this year and his, his playing time has been reduced so that's that's very difficult. Well tapped out and Pangos will start the Bulldogs back. Nice jump pass to the dunk with one hand by Olenek. Well, when you're in defensive transition, you must stop the ball, but then everybody else has to match up to a man, and Portland just hasn't done a very good job of that in this game. Rodgers will force the issue. Bank went off the rim and missed the shot. 20-point lead for the Bulldogs. 
Mike not afraid to pull the trigger from out there. He felt better of it this time down. He's so patient. And another back door and a red nice of this time by Portland, but a foul coming up. You know, talk about the facets of Kelly Olynyk in his game and the fact that he can run the floor. Yeah, watch Ken Kelly Olynyk right here. And he's going to, as soon as that ball goes up and he does his blockout responsibility. Now watch him sprint that right lane. Seven feet, very athletic, and can do that. I mean, what a luxury, right, for Gonzaga to have a big that can do that. Olynyk taking those high percentage shots is 79% from the field over his last five games. He has missed only 10 shots. And a hold on the inside. Really will pick up the other foul in his second. And we talk about the, the good shots that Gonzaga takes, and it shows in their their percentage from the field. They're the number two team in the nation. Weber State is the only team better than them. Well, I mean, they've been a good shooting team forever. So I coached 13 years against them, but they are exceptional this year. When you average 51% as a team, field goal percentage, I mean, that's phenomenal. Uh, trailer is hard. A lot better of it. Now a tie up, and Riley and Eddie both grabbing at the ball, but it'll be. Gonzaga basketball, the alternating possession. Teams will get set there on their inbounds plays. They'll come into Olinick. That skip pass. Basket still strong enough to muscle that one up and in. Strong indeed. <laughs> there are not many stronger bigs in the country than Kelly Olenek. 51 29, Gonzaga. And again, Portland trying to get a good shot. With the shot clock winding down, Nicholas will take action with all his hands and miss the shot, but get his own rebound. Up and in by Tanner Riley, a three. A three in each half for Riley. He has six points. And Eddie with some extended playing time here. And inside Olenek, up and under, got the friendly roll. I mean, he went through two defenders on that. He went through Ryan Nicholas, then Riley Barker to, to use the other side of the glass and finish. So smart, thinking on his feet. As the Bulldogs have built a 53-32 lead. It is their largest today. Nicholas missing the three. Eddie there for the rebound. And the Harris shot was blocked by Barker. And here come the pilots back the other way. Kelly Olinick has scored the Bulldogs' last six points. Ball toward the backcourt. Tracked down by Pangos. They're just so active defensively, aren't they? Well, they are. They're so good defensively. And Pangos, he didn't rely on Portland recovering that ball. He says, you know what? I think I can get it. And he sprinted the floor and got Gonzaga another possession. Well, we have a timeout here on the floor with 15.58 to go in this first half. Jamie Zaninovich, the commissioner of the West Coast Conference, will join us next. very talented this year and they're on a roll it's a it's a great team very committed to defense Portland's got a good young team but this is a very difficult place for everybody to play this year yeah, absolutely we've seen a, a few teams in the West Coast Conference come in here and get this same kind of treatment absolutely I was here for the BYU game too and uh, you know they're very talented teams up and down our our league but you're looking at could be a number one team in the country well speaking of the conference tournament Sounds like there's a new format, not this year, but the following year. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, we've gone to a more traditional format as we go to the 10 schools coming in with University of Pacific next year. So we'll go to uh, what might be more deemed a more traditional format, 7, 10, 8, 9 games, and then play a, a true quarterfinal on Friday. I think the building will just be absolutely electric with four quarterfinals uh, in one day uh, on Friday in Las Vegas. So we're, we're looking forward to that. We think it's it's time now in the West Coast Conference to go to a more traditional format. Now, you're on the ACC. Committee, talk about, speak about what goes into that process. 
watching a lot of basketball. So if yeah. you like basketball, it's a good uh, it's a good gig. Uh, watch a lot of basketball. We all uh, divide the conferences in the country up. I have seven conferences I monitor, and I'm responsible for basically keeping close contact with their conference offices and watching a lot of their games. And then uh, two Wednesdays from now, we'll go into the room in, in Indianapolis in a sequestered hotel hall, and we'll spend five days together and select seat and bracket the, the 68. Now, for your league, the West Coast Conference, obviously, for sure Gonzaga, St. Mary's in. Do you see beyond that possibly a team getting into the tournament? I think it's hard to predict. I mean, we'll certainly have more than that in the under consideration conversation. I'm, I'm not part of the conversation. Obviously, I leave the room for those. But I think the important thing is that we're, our conference is now nationally recognized as a multi-bid conference on an annual basis. That's important to us and something that we want to uphold going forward. How often does your committee get together and, and exchange notes about you know what teams you've seen and what teams you think might be you know worthy of consideration uh, starting in November we'll basically meet on a monthly basis leading up to March including uh, in February when we actually go through a mock selection process to sort of do a run through for the process for everybody so we're doing these conference monitoring conversations pretty much monthly from December through March where it culminates so uh, you know it's really important there's so many teams this year's a great example I mean there's so many teams in the conversation the quote unquote bubble is so large uh, that it's really important to have folks you know, looking closely at each conference and the relevant schools and reporting on those so we all know who to watch and where to watch as things come down the stretch. Now you mentioned that you add Pacific next year so it'll be a 10 team league. I know the coaches at times have been frustrated with the nine team league scheduling but that's got to be a lot better with everybody having a true travel partner etc correct? Yeah we, we knew what the schedules would look like uh, when we went to nine, I'm not sure everybody totally appreciated what they feel like. Uh, and it has been challenging. Uh, and our coaches have been have been great about it, as have, as have our athletic administrators. But when we go to 10, we'll go to traditional travel partners, Gonzaga and Portland in the Northwest. We'll pair up Pacific and St. Mary's in the Bay Area, as well as USF and Santa Clara. And then we'll have LMU Pep uh, down south, and then San Diego uh, will travel with BYU. And more traditional scheduling as has been before BYU came in. And you know, with BYU, obviously, if you get a chance to add a uh, team to accomplish like that, you have to jump in. Yeah, that was a unique opportunity, and in the end, happened very quickly. And, uh, but we knew going in what the nine school schedules would look like, and I think strategically we felt, hey, we're going to commit to these and, and work with them for a year or two and see what they're like, and I think we realized that was more challenging than we thought, and, and that combined with the fact that it was the right time to add a previous conference member of Pacific who has a rich basketball tradition as well as in other sports that are really important to us was a good opportunity for us. Unfortunately, some uh, headlines that came out uh, yesterday we're dealing with uh, with St. Mary's and the, the, the four-year probation and, uh, and other penalties. Uh, just talk about what you can talk about in that situation with uh, regards to St. Mary's. Yeah, we released a statement yesterday. Obviously, we take uh, compliance very, very seriously in the West Coast Conference as part of uh, the values of our institutions. And, St. Mary's, I think, learned a lot from this experience, and, and they'll be better for it going forward, and, and we're here and ready to assist them in doing that. Well, I love what you've done, Jamie, in, in adding BYU, adding some cachet to the league, giving the West Coast Conference a chance to get three or possibly four teams in in the future, and now you've added Pacific, so really good job on that. Well, thanks. I mean, I think we're, we're very fortunate. You know, homogeneous is not always a positive word, but in our league, we have a very homogeneous set of schools, and that's really a positive for us. I think they think alike uh, in good ways, uh, but they're highly competitive with each other too, which is what you want. And I think that sort of synthesis between philosophies of the school is something that really helps us. Let's talk about Vegas for a moment here, because uh, since the conference tournament moved to Vegas, you could just kind of tell that there's a, a, a much bigger interest, and people want to get to Las Vegas, and it's a great venue at the Orleans Arena. It's, perfect, it's perfectly sized for what you guys need. Yeah, you know, we went through a process uh, over the past year to look at uh, other locations, and uh, we're likely going to uh, announce something in the future in terms of 14, 15, and 16, where we're obviously in Las Vegas at 13 through 13. But, you know, my philosophy has always been uh, if you can support a neutral site championship, do it, because it's the most fair way to compete. Uh, and then additionally, I'd rather be a little too small than too big. Uh, there's so many conference championships that have challenges filling their buildings, and I think we have arguably the perfect size facility for us. It's great energy. The back of house stuff is great for the programs and the teams and the fans. 
People like Las Vegas as a destination, so it's it's worked very well for us. It's an easy drive for a lot of the fan bases too. They don't have to really even get on a flight. Absolutely, very good proximity. Absolutely. Well, Jamie, keep up the good work, and uh, we certainly appreciate you taking a little time to join us here. And uh, good luck with that selection process. I don't envy you because it's, uh, it's a tough year this year. Uh, it's a it's a lot of fun and it's a lot of work, and uh, those things can coexist. Thanks, thanks to you and Time Warner Cable Sportsnet and everybody for doing such a great job on our games of the week. And it's great to have you guys up here in Spokane. All thank right, you, Jamie. Jamie, thank, thank you, you very much. Jamie Zaninovich, the commissioner of the West Coast Conference, taking a little time out of his very busy schedule to join us here and, uh, in Spokane. We certainly appreciate that. We'll see him in uh, Las Vegas coming up uh, right before we know it. That, uh, that tournament will be here. We really haven't missed a whole bunch as far as the, uh, the game action because uh, but no, no one scored in the last three minutes and 13 seconds. No field goals, at least. As the Bulldogs firmly in control by 20. This little high arcing shot there by Pangos, but did not go down. There's Rogers. Forced into that point guard role when David Carr went down for the year on January 5th. You know, if you're at Reveno and Portland Pilots, you want to continue to grind, you want to continue to try to score baskets and be remotely close in this game, you know, and, and just have pride of, of trying to play well and stay in there. Tilke with his first basket. Well, we're talking about Rogers, old senior on Portland. And Harry Bell hits the three. Yeah, Gonzaga just carved up the Portland zone right there by getting it to the high post, which draws attention, and then just the quick out to Gary Bell Jr. for the three. Maybe their team, as you can see, is shooting all that well here in the second half, but Gonzaga can afford that a little bit with a big lead. Off to Rogers. Now Parker will launch a three. And Portland just continues to have a terrible time of, of trying to get the ball into the interior of the Vandermars. You know, he really hasn't had very many touches for a guy that's really improved in the second half of this conference. Oh, cool. Seven straight double doubles. Vandermars just not getting very many touches. Just taking him out of the equation. I'll just try to force that one. But Barker there for the rebound. He's strong on the hook shot. And again on the run. The Bulldogs. Bell could not get that one in, but. Will be the recipient of a couple of free throws when we come back. Time out on the floor, 11.33 to go. Bulldogs 57, Pilots 36. Here's the president. With champions. As we look at the AP, top 10 in the country right now, and that's perhaps likely to change. Well, I hope so. I hope put number one up there and put the Zags right there now, posters. It's time for Gonzaga to be ranked number one in the nation. Yeah, we're doing our thing here to, to help promote that a little bit for the West Coast Conference. And I mean, it's strange, with all the good teams that have been in the WCC over the years, you talk about San Francisco as the last team that was number one and the only other team in the West Coast Conference history, and that's all the way back in 1977 to be number one. Yeah, I played against that team, Bill Cartwright and company. Uh, we actually played them in the NC2As, and that was a great San Francisco team. And then prior to that, obviously, with the great Bill Russell and, and Wally Jones, et cetera, uh, their team in the in the late 50s, early 60s. So uh, this would be a really cool thing, uh, not only for the Zags, for the West Coast Conference to have again a number one team ranked in the nation. Good old bragging rights, and again, it gives your conference a little legitimacy. People look at it and say, "Oh yeah, you're the, the, the conference with Gonzaga and uh, St. Mary's and BYU and others." Exactly. I mean, to be in that conversation, right? And I mean, Gonzaga over the years, they've they've been in the top 10 many times. Okay. But to be number one, that's something special. Really trying to force the issue there. Ball taken away. And now Stockton. Looking into Dower. And we'll turn around left short. Portland will come back the other way. It's always also interesting. There's a foul call there on Presley trying to drive. But if the, the Bulldogs get a win here today, they will have tied. Most wins in a regular season in school history with 29. They have never won 30 games 
here at Gonzaga. Well, I didn't realize that. A couple of times before, Gonzaga has had 29 wins back in 2002 and also in 2006, but have never won 30. Parker will check out. And a miss there and a rebound by Elias Harris. Well, I'll tell you what, if there was a race as to which team in the country that could get to 25 wins the fastest, <laughs> well, Gonzaga won that this year, seriously. A couple weeks ago, they reached 25. They lap the field as Barham will hit the three. And now it's a 62-37 lead for Gonzaga. This is when Portland gets tested, if they can at least make a game of it. And then there's a turnover by Rogers. Well, this is, uh, this is difficult duty for Portland, okay? I mean, this is senior day for a great team um, that's well engaged in this game and wants to send the sen seniors outright. Um, with a tough catch there on a pass from Stockton. Uh, Dower hits. So Dower with four. Excuse me, Olenek has 15 to lead the Bulldogs right now. He is on the bench with a career-high 11 rebounds as well. Presley misses, but Nicholas there to clean it up. And missed. 64-37 the score, and Gary Bell Jr., our Subway sub of the game, brought to you by Subway, home of the $5 footlong. Subway, eat fresh. Yes, hitting from everywhere. I mean, he's uh, head coach here the other night at BYU, and Pangos was one for 12. He hit three three pointers and, and kept Gonzaga in the game. Yeah, he's he's a he's a very good player. I mean, you see his numbers there: 11 points tonight, all off the bench, as we said, because Eddie got the start as a senior, and so he's not used to being sub, but a sub, but he, he's getting it done today. And Nicholas hits the free throw. Portland will throw a little full court pressure at Gonzaga. Looking inside of Dower, but Harris working hard, got the rebound, shot was swatted away, but a foul coming up. Again, so unselfish. I mean, Drew Barham had a wide open, almost a wide open three, and what did he do? He thought Dower had a better one because Dower was streaking to the basket and low to the basket, and, and then Harris picked up the second chance opportunity rebound. Now, how tough is that as a coach to, to get kids to buy into? Because everybody wants to take that shot because you're going to get yourself on highlight shows. You're going to you know, impress everybody with your, your stats. But it's not the best time always for team basketball. Right. I, I think part of it is, is how Gonzaga coaching staff coaches their guys. But I also think it's innate. I think they've got the kind of personalities that, on this team that they really don't care who scores. They just care about winning. And yeah, they've done a lot of that around these parts. Up comfortably in this one. We're working into Vandermars. Finally, he's having a tough time. Ball taken away. And there's our super sub, Gary Bell. Harris will give that up. Uh, point illustrated there. He had a good look. It's amazing what can be accomplished if no one cares who gets the credit. Who said that? The great John Wood. Yeah, I was going to say, you probably have uh, an idea of who that was. <laughs> Harris to the basket, lays it up and scores, and a foul. It's like a clinic. Yeah, this is this is an offensive clinic. Gonzaga is so efficient. Good rip through, footwork. Elias Harris from the perimeter, and the finish in the foul. Dower will check out. Karnowski is back in here for the Bulldogs. And Harris with one shot coming. about the friendly rims here at the McCarthy Athletic Center. 18 now for Harris. Not one Portland player in double figures yet. A 30-point advantage. Biggest lead of the afternoon for the Bulldogs. Rodgers with a circus shot missed. And now Bell with a three. Here, here's what I really appreciate about Gonzaga, and, and it, 
it, it talks about to their team and how they play. They haven't gotten sloppy. No. They've continued to play really tough defense and creating good looks on the offensive end. Making it a blowout, 72-39. Bulldogs in front, our super sub, Gary Bell Jr. doing the damage from three-point distance. Can. Bulldogs in command, 72-39 with 8.13 left to go. And uh, normally you wouldn't go ahead and name your player of the game this early in the game, but uh, we're going to go ahead and name Kelly Olenek uh, our A to Z Reynolds player of the game. No job is too big or too small, and we run everything. When A to Z Reynolds will be your most valuable player. Yeah, he's gone to work in all ways. Dribble drive, 11 career rebounds, coming off the curl cut with the finish. And then also he can streak the lane and complete a fast break. I know there are many, many coaches around the West Coast Conference. If you look at his numbers, 15 points, 7 of 8 shooting, 11 rebounds, third career double-double. But, uh, Coach, there are a lot of guys in the West Coast Conference hoping that this kid declares himself eligible for the NBA draft and is not around here next year. I know if I was coaching the league, I'd be, I'd be begging for that. But uh, you can see he only has three career double-doubles. You know what? That, that speaks to the depth of Gonzaga. You know, it's not like... Kelly Olynyk has to play 38 minutes out of 40, right, to help his team. Right. I mean, they're 10 deep. Now, he's their best player and likely MVP of the league, but, you know, a lot of guys contribute to the success of Gonzaga, and, and they truly are 10 deep. A lot of teams will play 10 guys, but they're not really 10 deep. They played out of necessity more than out of luxury. Bailey running through the lane, and he'll get fouled. So Bailey will get a couple of free throws. We'll talk a little bit about Portland here with the fact that Eric Repno was mentioning yesterday at practice about how this, this young team was starting to come together a little bit in December. But they had a couple of injuries. They had Bailey go down with a broken nose. And uh, he had to have surgery. Had to play with a mask for a little while. It was a little uncomfortable for him. His numbers were so much better without that mask. And then they had the David Carr injury where he went down for the year. Yeah, people don't remember that. I mean, David Carr it was their guy. He's their quarterback slash lead guard. And... For him to go down in early January, January with an ACL, that's a huge, you know, a huge negative for Portland. Absolutely. I mean, you try to look on the bright side if you're Eric Revenue and say you're going to have Carr back again. That's a red shirt. And Grant Guinness in there. The pilots have gone cold. They have gone four and a half minutes between field goals. And Gonzaga has gone on an 18 to 3 run in the meantime. As we have a timeout on the floor. Elias Harris, one of the three seniors honored here today before this ball game, loved in Spokane. More on Senior Day coming up. Here's Elias Harris honored here before the game as well, and a very special ceremony before this game. Harris doing his part. And Mike Harden. It seems as though, Coach, he got the, the, the biggest of the ovations. I know that <laughs> Harris is probably the better player. They're making the signal exactly. of the heart, exactly. right? The students, that was very cool. And then, you know, he's really one of my favorite players in the country. I mean, I mean that sincerely. As you take a look at him there, watching the game, I mean, he goes after every ball. He's an unbelievable, you know, energy guy. And again, big to big, Gonzaga right there, Karnowski to Harris. The, guy, the bigs just work so well together, don't they? I mean, they're in Absolutely. tandem constantly. That looked like a little like a Stockton to Malone right there, but it was Stockton to Harris. Deflection there. But you talk about glue guys, and I know that term is used a lot, but there are certain players that just get it, and they can deliver a coach's message there on the floor and just uh, with their style of play. Yeah, Mike Hart, I mean, pun intended, he has a lot of heart and uh, plays that way and has a big deal of why Gonzaga has been, as you see, Guy Landry Eddy. And I really like how Mike Hart, I really like how 
the entrances of the players and the introductions were done very tastefully. Elias Harris coming down the stands and, and then their senior manager there uh, in the middle. I mean, it was a well done ceremony. Absolutely, everybody was uh, looking toward the stands. As Rogers hits that shot to end the field goal drought for Portland. I mean, it's not like this crowd needs any extra revving up like nightly basis, but uh, it was certainly a feel good time to be in this arena. Barham looking inside. Nice little move there by Karnowski. He missed a shot, got his own rebound, score that one in a foul. Everything is going in Zaga's way. This is an old school big man move right here by Karnowski, and they're very high on him, his future. And see him go back to his to his uh, shoulder there, then he stepped through. Great patience on the foot. We'll watch him step through his man, get him up in the air. And then look how two hands on the ball and he kept it high. Didn't bring it down for a smaller player to steal. So Eddie will come back into the game. And Karnowski, as we mentioned earlier, was really practicing his free throws yesterday and misses his first one of the night. It's pretty good motion. You know, he's got good arc, he's got good rotation on the ball. It just needs to get the distance down right. With it. Rogers. Fancy dribbling there. Chilke back to Rogers. They've been looking for all day, but Vandermars has not been open. He missed a shot, but it was fouled. Let's uh, kind of give an idea of what this Gonzaga team does to you defensively. Gonzaga had 46 points scored in the first half alone and have only allowed Portland 42 points, and we only have a little under six minutes to go. Well, that's what we talked about at the top. I mean, Mark Few has his team playing at such a high level, leading the conference in field goal percentage, and leading the conference in being stingy on defense and only allowing their opponents less than 40% shooting. I mean, when you have that combination going, I mean, that's that's hard to beat. Hart will come in. And Elias Harris will get his curtain call. And that's got to be a great feeling for him. That's great. Mark Few talked this, this morning about how he's never had a player that's just so low maintenance. You know, there's never been any controversy in any way, socially, academically, athletically, and he just couldn't speak high enough. Elias Harris. Hart will likely be the next to get that curtain call. And back into the game. Eddie will drop. And I'll in it for three. If he can make all those trick shots, why can't he make that open three footer? That's a simple point. To you. It really goes between your legs all the time, right? You make the spectacular play, but not that one. Uh, Stockton whistle for the foul. So two shots coming up here. And we talk about the, the potential for 30 wins, but uh, also with a win here tonight, the Bulldogs would win 12 in a row, their longest streak since 05 06. And they had a 20 game winning streak that was snapped by UCLA in the Sweet 16 that year. Zaga, no stranger to the NC2A tournament. They have, they've been to four Sweet 16s and one Elite Eight. Uh, I mean, this program, 14 straight NCAA appearances. It's amazing. I mean, talk about domination of a league. You're talking about the Zags. Absolutely. You know, that old cliche gets thrown around a lot too about rebuilding and reloading. Well, it's it's true here. Well, you know, they're a national program. One, one of the things that I appreciate about Mark Few is that, yeah, we're in a mid-major conference, but we're not a mid-major program. We recruit nationally, and we play a national schedule. Yes, I mean, listen, Andy, who they played in the non-conference. West Virginia, Clemson, Oklahoma, Kansas State, Baylor, Oklahoma State, all in the non-conference. They're not afraid to play anyone, anytime, anywhere. And usually good things happen when they get those teams here inside this building. Oh, nice move inside again by Karnowski. Well, that makes the departure of 
Elias Harris and potentially Kelly Olenek more palatable for Mark Few with a couple of post moves there by the freshman. <laughs> 78-46, Bulldogs in command. And Nicholas, the hometown kid, Spokane. Made that shot. The pass taken away from him by Guy Landrietti. Oh. That was poked away from behind. And it's funny because Nicholas played his, his high school ball at Gonzaga Prep. And after doing a little digging, he found out that the, the nickname of Gonzaga Prep is the Bull Pumps. <laughs> Not quite bulldogs, they're bull pups. Oh, that's great. And you know, David Stockton and Ryan Nicholas were teammates together. I think I think David's one year older than Ryan, but uh, that's pretty cool for them to, to be playing against one another in the West Coast Conference. Tokyo will drive. Riley hoisting up the three, miss. Nicholas right there to get the rebound. This is a junior, so of course he'll be back. Loses just one player. And Riley with a nice little lead in shot there. No, I mean, the bad news for Portland, if they had two key injuries you mentioned earlier, and they have a lot of young players, the good news is those young players, they're getting valuable playing time and experience that's going to bode well to them next year. And then when they get their point guard back, their quarterback, David Carr, which is crucial, they're going to be a lot better. So a foul and free throws coming up when we get back. Timeout on the floor. 343 left. Bulldogs by 30 points here in Spokane. Six, seven footer Ke Kelly Olenek is just I mean, he's one of the most efficient players, if not the most efficient players in the country, shooting 66%. And again, no weakness in his game. Um, Going to play 20 some odd minutes in this game and, and get a double double. And uh, I think a first team All American. I agree with you. Uh, there are not many better. If, if you can, if you'd struggle to name two or three guys in this country that are that are better than. Him. Not only that, he can play a little basketball. He was also named an academic All American, an academic All WCC, first team member, along with Mike Hart. You know, I mean, the West Coast Conference got to be very proud of Kelly Olenek, first team academic All-American. Mike Hart, second team in, in, in the West Coast Conference, rather, first team West Coast Conference academic All-American. But Matthew Della Vadova on the national scale, second team All-American academically. And then Mark Trazzolini, third team academic All-American. So that conference got to be very proud of that. Absolutely. Yeah. Typifies what they mean by student athletes. It sounds cliche, but uh, it's it's very important to to all the uh, the teams here in the conference graduate their players and uh, make them a success if they're not going to be playing basketball at the next level, or whatever they decide to do. Well, the academics, Andy, in this league, in this conference, are very very good, and so for guys to become academic All Americans, they got to be great at managing their time, and of course they got to be really good basketball players. So kudos to them for having that combination. Lost out of bounds there by Tilke. Before that, Barker with a nice block on Karnowski. Just could not convert at the other end. That has pretty much been the story here this entire game. Let's see by the score, a 30 point lead for the Bulldogs. Eddie, a short on that three attempt. Back door to Tilke. No, oh, missed time on the leap, and then he lost it on the back. And Tilke, a little frustrated with himself, but Olenek again, the first team in the West Coast Conference, all academic. Matthew Della Vadova, Mark Trazzolini, all Americans in the uh, academic situation. And it's just amazing, you know, you have that much talent as a basketball player, and then uh, he's a graduate student. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, when I was at USD, I mean, you got fifth-year seniors, and I, I understand that that Kelly is a, is a fourth-year player. But when you got fifth-year seniors that are almost done with their master's degree, whether it's an MBA or some other graduate program, I mean, that speaks so well to the conference. I mean, I had a number of guys that completed their masters, you know, when they completed their eligibility at USD. That's 
some fine institutions of higher learning in this conference as well. Spread all across the nine soon to be ten teams. Winding down toward two minutes. Gaylers will hit that jump shot. Jake Gaylers, one of those freshmen that they're high on for the for the future for the Portland Pilots and uh, with a nice baseline jumper and Mike Hart. He had a very good swan song and played solid as he usually does in this game. And as we talked about, the students making the heart sign. I love that. Well, the Wizard of Oz says, you know, you've got to have hearts. He's he's uh, he's no tin man. No, sir. <laughs> Anything but. Try and get us all the way to the hole and lays it up and in. Eighty to fifty. All deflected out of bounds, and uh, we'll get the final swan song here. I'm sure Guy Landrietti will be the man to check out. And there he goes to a nice round of applause. emotional moments for those kids too you know it is for the coaches too mm -hmm. you know because you got them as 17 year olds and they're they're graduating as 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 22 year olds and you see the tremendous growth and you're a part of that growth and uh it's definitely emotional Seniors. Well, it's been a successful senior day, and that's what you want if you're Gonzaga. I mean, to send out your guys in style and with a, with a big win, and then for them, a possible number one ranking oh, in the nation. As if it can't get any better, right? Some of the walk ons will get some time out here. Along with some of the younger players. And we get the one minute mark to go. Stocked in. Right off the front of the rim, but Dran Guinness will track down the rebound and a fresh possession. And that shot was blocked by Tilkey. And another block by Tilkey. Still taken in by the Bulldogs. And a missed shot, but free throws coming up. I'm laughing just at the reaction of the, the bench to the young guys, the, the walk-on players, the guys that lay it out on the line every practice. They never really get the exposure, and everybody on the team appreciates those guys. It is, and it's neat for them that they get to be part of this day, you know, and send out the seniors, get a little time. Crowds behind them, the bench is behind them. And, you know, you just, you're dying to see them score. You know, you're dying to see them get a basket or a free throw and get in the books. It almost seems that they have more of an inclination to watch that happen than their own points tonight. And they got their wish. Steal nearly there by Stockton. Aimer down and a timeout called by Eric Remino. Thank you, seniors, a moment ago, and then the crowd started chanting number one, number one, which is uh, probably not too far away. It's appropriate. <laughs> it really is, and it'll be interesting to see what the coaches poll and the AP, what what they think of Gonzaga and that, and that possibility. There's no question that Indiana is, is the reigning number one team, but, you know, I mean, they've, They've lost recently and whatnot, and Gonzaga's continued to climb the rankings in a very steady pace. A look at the AP top 10 with Gonzaga as the number two team behind Indiana, but as Coach mentioned, Indiana lost. Michigan has also lost, so is Duke this week. Yeah, how about this? Huh? Come on now. Come on now. It's time for Gonzaga. It's their time. Riley 
he missed. Tell you what, this crowd is rather knowledgeable. They're saying, saying thank you, seniors, number one, and they're saying, come back, Kelly. Final seconds will tick off the clock here on Senior Day at Gonzaga, and the Bulldogs will have their 29th win of the year. As the two coaches exchange their pleasantries, Gonzaga has won the table in the West Coast Conference, now 16-0 and 29-2 and overall, and awaiting the decision of the voters. 52 your final. And kind of a, another large crowd here at the McCarthy Athletic Center. And Gonzaga had everything going their way. For Brad Holland and our entire Time Warner Cable Sportsnet crew, I'm Andy Mazur saying so long from Spokane. Once again, the final score Gonzaga 81 and Portland 52. Stay tuned for WCC this week. Coming up next. Have a great day, everybody. back on the WCC this week. They're hoisting the trophy here at Gonzaga for the 16th time in the program's history as the West Coast Conference champions. The Gonzaga Bulldogs after an 81-52 victory over the Portland Pilots here this afternoon in Spokane. And the next thing that Gonzaga will wait for is uh, the decision of the voters in the Associated Press and the, uh, the coaches poll as well to see if they agree that Gonzaga is the number one team in the nation. Regular season champs for 2012 and 2013. And uh, they sent their seniors out on a, a rather happy note, a winning note, as Elias Harris addressing the crowd here. I, I also want to thank my family. Not only my dad was here, but also my extended families in Germany. and. Uh, Obviously, the Spokane community, my, my coaches, the staff, and uh, especially my teammates. I mean, they've been there for me. I mean, it's been a, it's been a tremendous ride, and uh, I love all you guys. So. And, <laughs> and let's go down to Vegas and kick some you-know-what. Let's go. become a tradition here at Gonzaga to allow the seniors to address the crowd after the game. And now with the heart symbols, Mike Hart. Five years ago at Midnight Madness, I was sitting up there in that corner watching these guys play and uh, dreaming that I would be down here someday. And to be here now, it's, it's unbelievable. And to have all you guys' support uh, through my five years, it's been unbelievable. Student sections, fans over here, Spokane community, everybody, it's been awesome. Um, uh, my mom, my dad, my brother, uh, my extended family, uh, friends, friends out here, everyone, thank you for uh, all your support. Um, been through everything with me and uh, really supported me through everything. And, I can't thank you enough, especially you, family. Mom. Uh, whoa. And uh, like, like Coach Chu said and uh, like Elias said, uh, I hope you guys can come to Vegas. I hope you can go wherever we go in the tournament because it would be nice to have a home court advantage wherever we went. Uh, thank you. Well, you wouldn't know it, but again, Mike Hart took exactly one shot in this game here tonight, and it was a three-pointer that he hit. Woo! Finished with three points. He, Landry, Eddie, the final senior. Kenny Clark, the crowd. I love you. Um, I mean, I, those two guys said it all already, man. You guys have been unbelievable all year long. The fans, the students, my coaches, my teammates, 
my family flew all the way from LA to come here. Bill Hankins, Matthew, I love y'all. Thanks for coming. Uh, you know, my coaches and my teammates been through there for me in the hard and good and hard time. They never give up on me, and I would never give up on that team. Uh, we've been so close. That's why we're having uh, this great year, and uh, we all going to remember this year. So I want to thank you all, you guys, again. Spokane community, uh, the whole school, my coaches, teammates, and everybody. And this is the best choice I made to come to Gonzaga, and I love it. And I'm proud of it. Thank you. Well, a team favorite, Guy Landrietti, as uh, we mentioned during our broadcast. That he made 15 starts for this team a year ago. And Mark Few. You know, to his credit, we'll put the, the best team he can out on the floor. And Eddie didn't fit factor into that, and that saw his playing time decrease. So Guy Lander Eddie was the first to be honored by the crowd here before the ball game today on Senior Day. His guardian and, uh, and Mike Hart came down the steps of the McCarthy Athletic Center stands, and Elias Harris was the last man to be introduced to the crowd here, and along with their senior manager, were. Uh, all hailed by the crowd, and uh, they each got their own little swan song, like Hart, to the uh, Cascades of those little heart signs. Guy Landrietti also getting some well-deserved round of applause. And Elias Harris earlier in the game as well. And now they're celebrating the West Coast Conference Championship here in the regular season in 2012-2013 as they go 16-0 and, and tie a school record with their 29th victory of the season against just two losses and strangely enough those two losses came to ranked opponents one here on the home floor which is crazy to think about en enough uh, the event number 13 Illinois that took place much earlier in the season and then they lost at number 13 Butler on a buzzer beater and those are the only two times that uh, Gonzaga has lost the ball game this season and uh, you know the way they play it's uh, they, the other teams in around the country would be hard-pressed to, to try to figure out how to beat him. The man that uh, drew it all up, the architect, if you will. Mark Pugh is with Coach Brand Holland. Wow, what a scene here. Sent off the seniors right. Yeah, that's how we like to do it up here. It's a, we've got a lot of special groups up here, but I tell you, those three are, are something because they brought something a little bit different, a little different story from Harris, who will go down to one of the all-time greats to ever play up here, up here, to Mike Hart, who started in the student section. His first year here to Guy Landry, who not everything's went great for him, but he's, he's remained an unbelievable teammate through this whole year. Well, Coach, you've had such great success here, 14 straight NCAA tournaments, but what would it mean? Talk a little bit about being possibly number one ranked team in the nation. Well, we were talking earlier about that. I mean, you know, it's a big deal up here. I mean, it's not something that's ever happened here. We don't have any control over it. and. Uh, all we can control is how hard we play and how smart we play. But, uh, you know, we've accomplished a lot up here, and that's something that we haven't been able to, uh, to cross off the list yet. So it'd be nice. It'd be nice, but maybe more importantly, maybe a number one seed in the NC2A tournament. Yeah, I mean, that, we've been striving for that all year. But again, that, that's out of our control, too. So we know we're going to be a, a high seed. We're going to be excited to play in the tournament wherever they send us and whatever seed they give us but i also want everybody to understand we've had a heck of a lot of fun this year up to this point so it's not just all about the tourney and and all that now we're going to try to you know take it all the way to atlanta obviously but it's been a heck of a good ride here for four months well all the best in the conference tournament and the nc2a tournament thanks coach you got it all right andy back to you all right, Coach Holland, Coach Few, thank you very much. Uh, a very happy guy, and for good reason. I mean, his team is uh, celebrating its 16th West Coast Conference Championship. They're going to cut down the nets here at uh, Spokane here in just a moment. They've gotten kind of used to that, and maybe, who knows, uh, by Monday we'll be the number one team in the country. Coach Brad Holland now has Elias Harris. Well, senior, you sent it off right. Talk about the emotion that you're experiencing right now. It's so hard to describe. I mean, this place means the world to me. You know, I've been here four years now. I, I met great friends, family. I love all of them. They love me. I mean, it, it can't get better than that. It really can't. Now, you, you've had some wonderful moments in your career here, but does one stand out more than another? 
maybe you have to come. I think the best moment is right behind me, you know, cutting down the nets. It's the best moment right there, winning the championship, knowing that all the hard work you put in finally pays off, and uh, I think those are the moments that I will never forget. Well, you, you thought about probably a number one ranking. Do you and your teammates talk about that and how cool that would be? I don't think about it, and I don't talk about that. That's all you guys right there. <laughs> well, we'll keep talking about it. All the best in both tournaments, the conference and the NCAA. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Got it, Elias. Andy, here you go. All right, Coach Holland. Thank you, Elias Harris, who, by the way, now is 11 points away from being the number four scorer in Gonzaga school history. I mean, he should get that uh, in his first uh, West Coast Conference tournament basketball game. He also moved into ninth place on the uh, Gonzaga all-time steals list. So uh, a nice game for and a nice career here for Elias Harris, who's getting set to cut down the nets. The other guy who is a, a star for this basketball team and is only a junior, will he come back or will he not? I'm just not thinking about that right now, but Kelly Olenek is standing by with Coach Brad Holland. Yeah, I got the big fella here, and, and Kelly, this is such a cool scene right now. Talk about sending off the seniors in the right way. Oh, it's unreal. I mean, the seniors have been huge. Elias is doing it for four years. Mike, last three years has been unreal for us. Real glue guys, especially Guy as well, has been here a couple years. I mean, it's a great way to send them off, man. Going undefeated in conference, uh, bringing it home, and uh, having having this happen here, uh, a solid win against a, a, a good team is no, nothing better. Is this team as put together as it seems emotionally? You guys seem super connected. Great chemistry. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, like you said, the chemistry is unreal on this team. Um, emotionally, we, we all love each other on and off the court. Uh, it's been an unreal year in that sense. I mean, we all have each other's back. We believe in each other, and we want each other to succeed just as much as we want ourselves to succeed. Well, individually, you've had quite a junior year yourself, huh? Yeah, it's been all right. It's been all right. But, I mean, the team's overshadowing me, so I, that's the way I'd like it to be. Well, good luck in the next step in the conference tournament. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. You got it, Kelly. All right, Andy, back to you. All right, Coach Allen and Kelly Olenek, thank you very much as well. Kelly Olenek, by the way, over his last five games, shooting 80% from the field. Talk about the, the chances that he gets on the inside with some point blank shots and uh, he has certainly made all those baskets count as Gonzaga goes on to a blowout victory here today over Portland and run the table at 16 and 0 in the West Coast Conference cutting down the nets as they uh, get their 29th win of the year that equals the school record for most wins in a regular season. Mike Hart, the other senior, one of the other seniors, the glue guy is standing by with coach Brad Holland. Yeah, I got the guy that plays with all heart. Mike, great job. Talk about your emotion right now, this being your last game here as a senior. Uh, it's pretty unbelievable right now. I mean, to be where we are in our position right now, uh, to be to win the conference undefeated, and uh, to do it with these guys is unbelievable. And uh, I mean, I can't say enough about my teammates and my coaches, and you know, what a great ride we've had this year so far. I thought it was really neat when you said, hey, I started right up there in the 25th row and as a walk-on, and what a career you've had. I did. I mean, Midnight Madness, I was up there. I was in this in this student section cheering them on. And uh, to be down on the floor now as a senior, after five years, it's, I mean, it's a journey and a, and a ride that I would never take back. All right, well, good job, Mike. And all the best in the next two tournaments, right? Thank you. Conference and NCAA. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, all right, Andy, take it away. All right, Coach Allen, thanks. Thanks to Mike Hart as well to, to, to kind of show you what uh, some hard work a round of basketball floor will do for you. We will be coming back in just a moment with more on the WCC this week from Spokane. Here's an enthusiast. 81-52, the final on our WCC game of the week as the Bulldogs take home the title once again as they hoist that trophy. Hi to the Raptors here at the McCarthy Athletic Center in Spokane, Washington. Uh, much to the delight of Mark Pugh and much to the delight of the fans that have gathered here today as well and have gathered here all the time to root on this Gonzaga Bulldogs basketball team. We continue on the WCC this week here from Spokane as Elias Harris also celebrating with that net around his neck. A player dreams of those kind of situations where they can climb up on that ladder, take the little scissors out, cut down the net, and put it around their necks. Yeah, his finest moment is the Zag might be ahead of him of what they do in, the, in both tournaments, but he said, this will be it for now, yeah. putting that net around his neck. You know, I, I get the sense, too, from your interviews out there on the floor that we, we've been talking about the chemistry of this team during the broadcast, but when guys put it into words, it, it's magic. It's, it's kind of cool to hear. No, it, it truly is, and it's from the heart, and it's very sincere, and and uh, I, I'm really impressed, and I'm not easily impressed I mean this team is a real team uh, they just play so hard and so well together 
So great recruiting, great coaching, and great home court advantage. And a 16-0 mark now for Gonzaga as we take a look at the updated standings after the games today. Gonzaga number one at 16-0, St. Mary's at 13-2. BYU will finish third at 9-6, Santa Clara at 9-6 as well. They're the number four seed. San Francisco and San Diego tie at 7-9, but San Francisco gets the tiebreaker to get the five seed. Pepperdine finishing in the seventh spot, Portland eighth, and Loyola Marymount ninth. This is how the conference tournament will look. Gonzaga, number one. St. Mary's, number two. BYU gets the single by uh, as the number three seed. So does Santa Clara as the four. San Diego will play Pepperdine. San Francisco will take on the winner of the first round game between Portland and Loyola Marymount. And uh, at the surface, I mean, you would think as you move forward during this tournament that the number one and the number two seed are going to have something to say about it in the end. Well, in the way the, the form format is in this tournament, you get a double bye if you're one or two. So that leads itself to having a great chance to what? Win the whole thing and be the automatic bid in the NC2A tournament. So being one or two in the West Coast Conference right now is huge. Although Jamie talked about the commissioner, he talked about how there'll be a different format next year with having 10 teams. Right. And Gonzaga, you know, you talk about the importance of being the number one seed in the NCAA tournament. Also, if you're the number one team in the country, you might get preferential treatment as far as being in the West. Well, no doubt, but the percentages of being a number one seed in the NCAA tournament is huge toward getting to the Final Four. So, if, you know, your path is going to be easier percentage-wise if you can get that number one seed. All right, we'll have more coming up on the this week in the WCC. Our studio will take over for a few moments, and then we'll rejoin you here in Spokane. Gonzaga wins it and cuts down the net, celebrating the West Coast Conference Championship. This game. But first, Elias Harris arrived at Spokane, Washington as a college freshman, having lived his entire life in Germany. But he has found a home at Gonzaga University, and a strong senior year campaign has Harris hoping that the next step to his basketball journey is the NBA. Let's meet Elias Harris. Hello, ich bin Elias Harris. Ich gehe zu Gonzaga University. Bin Power Forward und komme aus Speyer, Deutschland. I'm Elias Harris. I go to Gonzaga University. I'm a Power Forward from Speyer, Germany. Here's Harris going up. Two-handed dunk, Elias Harris explosive on the offensive end. I just love it. Harris in a pick and roll, Elias drives, shot up, count it, the foul on Santa Clara. I'll choose Gonzaga because I like the, the way the community is out there. Obviously, the, the winning record they have going on, the NCAA appearances, you know how many trips they made it to the tournament, and just that the family feeling that I had there. Elias was kind of quiet at first, and when I first uh, Got to know him and he didn't say much, but then when he came to Gonzaga, he opened up and we got to see the real Elias. I came to the United States for, uh, for my freshman year of college. Before that, it was all German. The hardest thing for me coming to the States, I think, was the language barrier first. Uh, I mean, I understood everything when I got here, but my, the speaking part was a little slow. There's Harris. And a chance for three. I see myself as uh, the motor of the team, you know. I feel like when I go hard and, and fly around and, and make plays that I can like, actually take my, my team on my shoulders and just lift them up and everybody just follow my lead. He's so powerful in the block and um, he, he might not look explosive but sometimes, but then he'll just jump out the gym and dunk on somebody. Let's go back to his freshman year. He had that breakout season playing alongside Matt Bolden. Probably had a chance to go to the NBA. He's a guy that loves college basketball. I personally chose to stay Gonzaga because I knew my game was not at the level that it's supposed to be if you want to play in the NBA. I knew that. He wanted to be a good teammate and just be around the guys. The thing about Gonzaga is everybody wants to stay there. The friendships you build with the team, Hey, it's unreal. I think over the last, you know, three years, I developed my game. I think I got a, a more well-rounded player, more a stronger player, more physical player, and I play smarter now. Shot wouldn't go, but Elias Harris is there for the easy putbacks. I'm trying to, like, you know, take the next step and make it to the NBA, and I know it's going to be a really hard step, but uh, that's that's my number one goal, and I tried to do that first. And if that doesn't work out for me, then uh, obviously Europe is always an option. I mean, I'm European, so it's not going to be. It's not going to be a disaster if I end up in Europe. He's pretty serious off the court, but he's also a goof as well. He's a good guy, a great guy, actually. 
Elias' accent is the best because I always make fun of it. I uh, went to the store today and I got some milk and some cookies. If 10 is the best, I would give it like a five. He thinks it's tremendous and it's really, really good. And he kind of passed it off to David Stockton. I don't even think my accent is that bad anymore, but to those two guys, they think it's just the funniest thing in the world to make fun. But uh, I take it, you know, I take it as a joke. My favorite part of the Kentucky campus is probably the gym for me, to be honest. I mean, McCarthy Athletic Center is my favorite part. Then also our campus is, is beautiful. We've got a lot of old buildings, you know, and just the way our campus is, I think it's really, it's really pretty. The candle's rocking. This place is going bananas. They are a six man. I think without them, we wouldn't have such a successful season. I think at home, it's, they do such an outstanding, tremendous job just helping us and cheering us on and just, you know, just lifting, lifting us when we need to, and uh, it's unreal. Coach Hugh is a great mentor. I mean, he's the uh, best coach I ever had in my life so far, you know, and uh, he really, like, showed me how to, how to play basketball and what it comes down to, and uh, I'm really thankful for that. So much fun being with this team and off the court and on the court. Obviously, success helps it be like more fun, but um, the way things go right now and the fun that we have and the team camps we have, I think, you know, the sky's the limit. I don't know where we're going to end up, but I hope as far as possible. Coach Elias Harris, such a, a great story. Uh, one of the most improved guys in the WCC. He certainly is, Chris. I like the way he worked on his body. He got into the weight room and also his high basketball IQ. He's been able each year to come back and add something different to his game offensively. And as he got into better condition and better shape, he became a better defensive player on that side of the floor. All right, Coach. Gonzaga finishes the conference undefeated and number one in four in the country, Indiana and Michigan lost. Are the Zags the number one team come Monday? They should be because when you look at that non-conference schedule, they beat almost everybody in their path. They lost on a freaky shot at Butler and then lost to Illinois early. But when you look at their body of work, they beat five big 12 teams. This is a team that should be the number one seed in Salt Lake City, hands down. Extremely well coached, can play at two speeds. They've got good guards and NBA size on that front line. If the Zags win the conference tournament, are they the number one seed out west? They should be. When you, again, look at what they've been able to do, they'll go anywhere. They'll play anybody. Hands down, they should be rewarded and land in Salt Lake City. Let's talk bubble teams, BYU and St. Mary's. Who's getting in? Who should get in? Well, I believe that St. Mary's is in. Um, they have an RPI of 44. They have five RPI top 100 wins. And I believe that you're looking at a 10th or 11th seed come Selection Sunday. BYU will have to get to the WCC Tournament Finals to hope that they can dance in March. Davies will have to be his double-double self. Hawes will have to score in transition. We know that Davies likes to rim run. So this is somebody that they're going to get out. They can score. 85 to 90 percent of their offense is in transition, but we know when you get into tournament play, WCC and the NCAA, the game slows down and you have to really rely on half court execution. All right, coach conference tournament uh, coming up. The Zags clear cut favorite. Is there a dark horse? There's a team that I, it would scare me. They haven't played well of late, but it would be Santa Clara. And when you look at Santa Clara, this is a team that can get extremely hot. They return four starters. They have four 1,000-point scores. They're very dangerous when they shoot the ball well. They can score in bunches. Rockamore and Foster have the green light. Trazzolini is a pick-and-pop guy. They really haven't met my expectations of being a veteran team. But again, all they have to do is get on a little bit of roll and make baskets and defend, that would be my dark horse. All right, that's it for me and Coach. We'll get you back to Spokane after this. 81-52, the final. Gonzaga winning the outright WCC regular season championship, going 16-0 as they hoist that trophy high here at the McCarthy Athletic Center. Andy Mazur along with Coach Brad Holland. And, uh, you know, we really haven't danced around this issue, but we've talked a lot about being number one and what it would mean to be a number one seed. But uh, bottom line, do you think this team could win it all? They're as good as advertised. They're a Final Four team in the making, in my, in my belief. And, you know, they have no weakness in their game. Offensively, defensively, they share the ball, extremely unselfish. And, you know, you look at the NC2A tournament, Andy. I mean, there are eight to ten teams that can win this whole thing. 
And you, you're kidding yourself if you don't think Gonzaga is one of them. I mean, they're that good. So it's a wide open tournament. And then St. Mary's, uh, I talked about it earlier. St. Mary's has a really good club. And when you have Matthew Della Vadova as your point guard, you got a chance to do some damage in the tournament. Yeah, it's going to be a fun tournament uh, as far as the West Coast Conference tournament is to watch in Las Vegas. That'll be coming up on March 6th. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll keep you posted all the way through. Gonzaga winner and the West Coast Conference regular season champions. Good night from Spokane. It's an enthusiast.